Hi everyone, it's Marianne. Welcome to my Raceless Life. In this video, I'll be sharing with you my plant care routine. Thank you so much for joining me today and if you're new, this is my Raceless Life where I take you along my plant and sustainable lifestyle journey and share with you some of my tips and tricks along the way. And for today's video, I'll be sharing with you how I take care of over 75 houseplants a little bit more than that if you also include my plant propagations but if you've been watching me for a while you know that i used to have over 100 plants and this year i've been working on decluttering and downsizing my plant collection by the end of the year i hope to have around 70 house plants and so far i'm right on track and i'm happy to share with you my progress so far in this video also hopefully answer a couple of your plant questions that i have yet to answer for my plant q a video I know I've gotten a couple of questions about taking care of plants in Leica as well as specific plant care tips and hopefully I'll get to answering those questions today. So when I take care of my house plants, I don't take care of them all at the same time and I also don't water my plants all in the same day. Normally what happens on a daily basis, I'll be watering a couple of plants here and there but Fridays is my big plant care day so I'm not only watering my plants but also doing all of my necessary plant chores like Friday is the day when I check on my plants that are in Leica so let's go ahead and do that now I do have a love-hate relationship with Leica some of the plants that I originally had in Leica I converted back into soil but the plants that I currently have in Leica I'm very happy with them and I have no plans of converting them anytime soon so since today is my Leica day I'm going to check on all of my plants in Leica check on their water levels give them fresh nutrient water and maybe even flush some of the plants that I didn't get to flush last Friday. So here's my Mustera Adansoni. I do have it in Leica. It has been in Leica for about a year now I believe and it did suffer from scales if you've seen my previous videos but now it's doing okay and I've also given it a moss pole. So what I'm going to do is give it fresh water because it's pretty much out of water right now and I'm just going to dump the water in the water tray and when it comes to my plants in Leica I know people are very confused with nutrients I like to keep it simple what I use is this this is the Dynagro Foliage Pro all-purpose liquid plant food so basically this one I also use to fertilize my house plants as well and what's great about this is just simplifies everything when it comes to fertilizing and providing nutrients for my house plants i fertilize my house plants every two weeks if i'm using this on my house plants that are currently in soil i use about two teaspoons or two bottle caps per gallon of water for my plants in leica i use about a teaspoon or a bottle cap per gallon of water and i've already mixed up some water yesterday so i have it over here and what i do is i pour some of the water through the Leica first just to clean it out even though it's not a flush day and then I just put some water back in the container and that's pretty much it it's not complicated I think the question that I got is how much water do I put in the water reservoir but for this one I put about this much I don't know if you can see when I took out the pot the water level reaches about here which is about a third of the pot and that's how you kind of want it to be just be a third of the way you want to be very conservative with the amount of water that you put in the reservoir because putting too much water in the water reservoir could lead to root rot but that's one of the biggest issues that i had with my plants in leca i was experiencing a lot of root rot and i think one of the reasons is because i was putting too much water in their water reservoir but another issue that i was having with my plants in leca was I wasn't giving them water when they need to so I have plants that no longer had water in their water reservoir and that also affected the health of the plant usually the way it manifests that is by producing yellowing leaves that's when I know that I forgot to give them water this Mustera Adesone narrow form this one is in Leica and because it's hanging I often forget to give it water as you can see this one over here it's pretty empty so I'm gonna top that off this Glacier Pothos is also in Leica and this is also the one that I also often forget because it's hanging so I'm gonna go and make sure to change out the water and give it fresh nutrient water.
I can actually see some root rot in this one. I am not going to take it out because I don't see any manifestation of the root rot in the plant itself. So I think it will be okay. I honestly was just being lazy. But if you see root rot, you should deal with it right away. Do not wait for it to affect your plants. It definitely will. But right now, I'm just leaving it be. Put it back in the cash bowl with some water. Just make sure the water level is correct. There you go. Very easy. This is the cash bowl of my Monstera Adansoni Nara form. I just took it out and cleaned it and now I'm playing a very dangerous game. That whole thing might drop so I'm trying to work a little bit fast so I can bring back the cash bowl for that Monstera Adansoni. Right. So I'm just topping off with water. And I'm just making sure that the water level doesn't go past that gold line. It could be well underneath that, but not past that. Yeah, so I think that one is good enough. A couple of other house plants I have in Leica are in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet. One is the Monstera Stanleyana variegata, and the other one is that Mycendapsis Silver Splash. And you can see how much my Syndapsis Silver Splash has grown. It has grown two new huge leaves. I'm very happy about that. And it's pushing another growth over here. And another growth over there. So as you can see, this one is very happy in Leica and in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet. So I brought this in the bathroom because I do want to give them a proper flush instead of what I did for the other two because <laughs> that one is what I do when I'm lazy but this is how I really should be doing it I bring it on the sink make sure water runs through them thoroughly so this one essentially what flushing plants in Leica entails is just to run them through the water and make sure anything especially when there's like white buildup on top so that's like mineral and calcium buildup just want to wash them off. This one didn't really have that, but still want to clean it out. And also take the opportunity to clean out the cash flow. If needed, I would wash it with soap, but this one is pretty okay. I don't need to do that. And I'm going to do the same for the Stadliana. And, okay. and this one might, not, might need repotting because it's a little bit unstable. It's a good opportunity to check the roots because this one has been propagating in roots and it did have prior root rot but now it don't have any root rot it just have healthy roots but it just needs to be anchored a little bit more properly so let's do that so i wash this pot as well and pour some collector at the bottom just a little bit, same way you would do if you were potting something in soil. You want something at the bottom before you put the plant in. And one good thing about plants in Leica is potting is very quick and easy. So just like that, I already repotted this. So for some people, they like to also pH their water. I used to do that for my plants in Leica. Now I don't because I also find that when I add nutrients on my water, it brings down the pH a little bit. So I don't really need to test or change the pH of my water before I use it for my plants in Leica. And so far they've been fine. No complaints from them. So I'm putting, I'll probably say half a cup of water, no more than that. Um, but now since I've been doing it for quite a while, I'm just eyeballing it. And that's pretty much it. It's very easy. Plants in Leica. Once you get the hang of it and your plants actually like being in Leica, it is easy to have plants in Leica. But if they don't like Leica, then it's a lot of trouble. So I actually did clean my IKEA greenhouse cabinet yesterday, so there's really not much to do over here. But there are a couple of plants that I do want to repot, like this, the Syndapsis trivii, and the 
jade satin. I'll see if I can do it today because the weather has been erratic. It stormed earlier, but now it's sunny. And this Stratoscantia I have to put back inside. This is one of the newest Stratoscantia that I got. The Stratoscantia linen, this one I actually just repotted before I started filming. I actually have several pots of this because I bought a really large pot. I think a 10 inch pot for just $7. I got it at Little Supermarket. But I divided it into smaller pots because I don't really need a lot of it. My other Stratoscantia plants are just like small plants. Like this one, this one, although I do have a larger Stratoscantia Nanook. And that one. Yeah, so this one that was part of my repotting, which I think I'm going to put to replace that Syndapsis pectus argyreus over there. There's nothing wrong with it, but it is a plant duplicate. I already have one over there. And as you know, I've been trying to not have any more duplicates in my room. I know what you're going to say. Marianne, this is also a duplicate. You already have a smaller one in your IKEA greenhouse cabinet. Yeah, but I've seen Minimalist Callie have one of this in her honeycomb shelf. And it actually looks really good when it starts to trail. So I want to put this up there and get it to trail. And it's been starting to trail a little bit already. So that's why I want to put it up there. So let's take this one down. This plant needs watering and also pruning. We will do that after this. And let's put this one over here. There you go. Looks good over there. So this Syndapsis pectus argyreus need watering and also pruning. I am going to be using the water that I have in here. Recycling water, yes, it's okay. It's safe for my plants. Uh, I know some people would advise against that, but I like to save water when it comes to taking care of my plants. And the plants that I have in Leica were okay. They didn't have any diseases or pests or anything like that, so it's okay for me to reuse their water. And that's a thing that's okay for me to do, but maybe for your house plants, you might want to use fresh water. I know some people even love to use distilled water on their house plants, which a lot of people insist that they do need distilled water for their house plants but i'm on the side that you really don't need distilled water for your house plants i give my plants the water that they need but at the same time tap water is okay for them me recycling water or them sharing water is okay for my house plants but i do find giving them distilled water or any special type of water very unnecessary. If I can give them rain water, I do give them rain water, but tap water would do most of the time. One question that I get when taking care of my pothos plants is how I keep them bushy and just grow very lush leaves. And again, this is probably something people don't like hearing because they like their plants to trail as quickly as possible. But my best tip really is to prune your plants and prune it regularly. So if you have this going on in your house plants, just prune them off, cut them off. There's no sense keeping them. Since I already have a lot of house plants, I would probably just throw this away. But this is also something that you could propagate if you really want to save it. So just cut off the nodes like this, stick it in the soil, and wait a few weeks, a few months sometimes, and they will grow into a plant. And for a single leaf cutting like this, you can propagate it in water first or in a propagation medium of your choice. If you don't care if they're going to propagate or not, just stick them to the soil. That's how I keep my plants bushy. And so any of the straggly vines that I cut off and the vines or the single leaf that I cut off, I stick it back in the soil, they grow and they make the plant bushy on top. But that way my plant is also not wasting its energy for these leaves that are small or have white gaps in between nodes are not doing anything for the plants in general so I just cut them off okay so I'm just gonna let that drink some more water and do other plant chores
let me share updates on the propagations I have in this metal plant hanging stand which I got from the Hilton Carter by Target collection and if you haven't seen the video of me installing this you can watch it the video is linked up here and also down in the description but basically it's been doing well I have plants that have grown roots already like if you could check this like this pink syngonium it has grown a lot of roots I did add new cuttings here as well like this one the syndapsis trubii and the syndapsis jade satin not really doing anything a little bit of root growth but not much have a spider plant here uh one plant that i did add here was my monstera sultipicana because it was suffering root rot the snake plant wasn't really doing anything but after i did the video i did notice that the bottom part was just starting to rot so i took it out let it callous and put it back in the propagation station and so far it's doing well and this emerald pothos has grown roots as well i'm excited about that i want to damage that new plant new growth growth because it always happens when i am doing videos that's when i damage my plants I, I top them up almost every day because the test tubes are small so they use up the water pretty quick so i find myself having to top up the water or clean out the test tube regularly not daily but regularly when it comes to cleaning them and i try to clean them one at a time not all at the same time because i don't want to break the test tubes so the last thing that i want to update you on is the plants that i have in this corner which as you can see i don't have the birds of paradise here anymore because one it's getting too big for the space and second it was suffering from spider mites and i don't want the other plants to get infected so instead i have put the ficus audrey over here and it's also pushing out new growth and here's my ruby ficus elastica still growing it never stops and I have the Pilea Prepamodis over there that I probably have to repot soon because I have that in that turtle pot that doesn't have any drainage hole and my plants. I used to have the Anthurium Clarinervium where the Cebu Blue Pothos is. I put the Anthurium in the Ikea cabinet as you saw earlier and now have the Cebu Blue Pothos here, my Stromanthi Trio Star and my my thai constellation monstera that is pushing out a new leaf i'm very excited about that one and my syngonium albo which i've been debating whether i should propagate from now or propagate later i already have one propagating downstairs and i'm not looking to sell or trade my syngonium albo right now so we will see if i get the bug to propagate it i would show in a future video or maybe post it on instagram or somewhere on YouTube, community posts, stories, shorts, who knows, right? When it comes to my larger plants, I still rely on a moisture meter to tell me if they need watering or not. And for this Ficus Elastica, it's on dry, so it needs watering. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I hope you subscribe. I come up with houseplants and sustainable lifestyle videos every week. And if you haven't yet, go check out my videos up here until my next one. But until then, I see you. I appreciate you. Take care of yourself and each other. And have a plentiful day. Bye.